The Max was a comic by Sam Keith that ran from 1993 to 1998. I don't know anything about it. You can look it up on Wikipedia. However, The Max was adapted into an animated series. That was my shit. It was brutal, severe, dark, and a little funny in a sadistic sort of way. And that animation, watching now I can tell it was pretty minimalist, but even with limited motion, the show was savage and far removed from the silly, violent cartoons I'd grown up with. You know, those cartoons with the asshole rabbit tormenting the lovable loser Daffy Duck? Anyhow, Darkest Dungeon looks a lot like the Max. Chiaroscuro. Chiaroscuro is used to great effect to make the dungeons even darker, and the characters look even harder. There is no love in this place, only death, despair, and horror. The profession choices and character designs are intense as well. Plague Doctor, Hellion, Crusader, Bounty Hunter, Arbalist. Historically, these were not mundane professions. These people were dealing with some intense shit. The designs are identifiable, even if you don't know what the jobs are. By the way, an Arbalist is a person who uses one of those giant f***ing crossbows. You know, the ones with the big crank? Yeah. The dungeons feel sticky and wet. They look decrepit and dingy. They represent terror in its very essence, all just by using creepy details and light to a very strong effect. And while we're on the subject, light is very... Oh, son of a bitch. Light is very important in Darkest Dungeon. Who would have guessed? It has a mechanical function. More light affords you certain benefits and less light will f*** you over. It functions sort of like a parking meter, forcing you to use up your torches instead of, you know, quarters. It's just one more thing eating away at your party. They might be hungry or battered or even mostly dead, and the dark is just another thing you have to worry about creeping in. The time limit enacted by the torch is also meant to entice you to a certain extent. Running out of light isn't a death sentence after all. It makes things harder, but you don't fail immediately. It's sort of like Spelunky where the added danger can grant you greater rewards, better loot, a greater chance to meet a shambler who carries ancestral trinkets. Very. I still haven't talked about the animation. Darkest Dungeon uses minimal motion to its benefit, much like the Max. When things are calm, there's hardly anything happening on screen at all. Walking animations are dull, sorry. Background animations are non-existent, and in the Hamlet, there are barely any signs of life. When things start going down, like when folks are being shanked or getting poisoned, the entire screen moves. The camera zooms in on the action and you get to see every bloody detail, every bloody detail of the savagery being perpetrated. The animations are simple, but when you whittle the movement down to its barest pieces, you start to see the action in greater detail because there's nothing else to distract you. It also, I suspect, makes it easier to mod things, but that's neither here nor there. Of course, the soundtrack contributes to the ambiance. It's creepy and foreboding in equal parts, especially the pieces playing when you're in the dungeons, but I do recommend trying it without the soundtrack. As much as I love the music, the sound design is incredible and deserves credit for how creepy it makes the game. There's a lot of scraping, screeching, bellowing, and general eeriness. They borrowed a lot of cues from horror films, and it makes every moment unnerving. This is all to say that Darkest Dungeon has an intense aesthetic. Equal parts horror, darkness, savagery, and the unknown, this game makes it hard to not be stressed just by its execution of theme. It's solid, it's consistent, and it makes the game better just because of how well Red Hook stuck to it. Not to mention how well executed it was. These dark caves drip with an overabundance of humidity beyond my threshold of comfort. I nearly broke my ankle on the rocks, made slick with some ubiquitous slime. The pools stir and slosh with no visible cause, and the shadows beyond the torchlight seem to grow and shrink of their own accord. Video games don't give a shit about stress. John the Doom Guy Johnerson, yes that's his official name, don't look it up, mows down demons without a second thought. Joker Let's from it, Persona Joker. 5 runs around tearing masks off of creatures in a pretty horrific manner and all he can concern himself with is how cool it looked. Then what's his face from Dead Space? He's stalking through the spookiest hallways and getting jump scared and none of it bothers him in the least. But guess what? This shit would be stressful to like 95% of the population. But Darkest Dungeon has a clever stress mechanic. Earning 100 stress points will get you an affliction like paranoia or fearful or asshole. Although with some luck, you can become virtuous, which turns the mechanic on its ear. If you suffer an affliction and hit 200 stress points, your employee will have a heart attack, putting them on death's door or just killing them. The concept of stress is judged with a meter, not unlike damage. Where damage is incurred by physical violence, stress is incurred by, well, f***ing anything. Physical and magical attacks, animal noises, 
strange thoughts, lack of light, overabundance of light, strange creatures, being overwhelmed, being in a group with someone they don't like, self-preservation, a fellow party member saying something onerous, f***ing anything. Now, you may have noticed earlier, I referred to the character suffering stress as your employee. That was intentional, because I'm very clever. I wanted to make it clear that you aren't playing as the adventurers. You're the employer. Yes, you watch them go into the dungeons, and yes, they listen to every order that you give them. You are not the adventurers. Leading a party who is stressed, as opposed to being a part of a party who is stressed, is a significantly different experience. When I realize that I don't actually have to care about my dungeoneers, that I can just let them freak out and get rid of them when they become more trouble than they're worth, that complicated things for me. Like, as a gamer, I recognize that I'm working with mechanics. I'm using the rules of the game to get a better score. But as a human being, as someone who can sympathize with these individuals, digital though they may be, I'm unsettled. Human beings aren't disposable, but in Darkest Dungeon, they are. Every member of every class looks nearly identical. My plague doctors, Linve and Photocopius, are virtual carbon copies of each other, save for the differences in quirks and abilities, both of which can be managed to suit your needs. And with each round, you have the ability to recruit more versions of each class. Like, literally, you can get rid of someone in your party just to hire someone who is almost exactly the same. Your adventurers experience the stress of the dungeon crawl. They are the ones who are suffering from demonomania, dipsomania, and night blindness, conditions that make dungeon crawling more difficult, and conditions that might have even been caused by your orders. As the manager, you have to decide how these quirks will affect your success. To put it another way, Darkest Dungeon wants you to decide if a person's anemia will affect your bottom line and wants you, that was a weird way to say you, and wants you to ignore how it affects the character. As a mechanic, this is clever. Healing a character's body is a matter of bandages and stim packs. Healing a character's psyche, however, is more complicated. Fellow dungeon crabs can help each other a bit with kind reassurances. Individuals performing crits and becoming virtuous can help a bit more, but that's unpredictable. The facilities in the hamlet are the most reliable, but will cost you money, and your suffering adventurer might disappear for longer than you expect. And that doesn't even account for the time and money you might spend on curing those quirks that might be detrimental to your goals. But here's my thing. I've worked at software companies before, and I know that some managers have no trouble actually treating their employees like this. The stress mechanic in Darkest Dungeons is a description of how some real-life managers treat their real-life employees as assets, not as human beings helping them to achieve a goal. Darkest Dungeon doesn't really confront this reality, just explains this is the way it is. And I'm not sure if that's a positive or a negative for this game, but, but we can still take the idea here and try to figure out how to fix it. But Darkest Dungeon is about just surviving the hell you're in as you're slowly driven towards death and slash or madness. Hopefully you don't think your life is the same. Please, take care of yourself. Sebastian's watch was his last. We were jolted during our evening's repast, the best we could make in these murky halls of our once great house, from the roar and flash of black powder. Let's talk about leveling. It, only for a moment though, so don't get too comfortable. Earthbound is a game that requires leveling. Wah 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 wah. It does. Ness starts out pretty weak, and even though the enemies around you are also pretty weak, they're strong enough that the game is challenging. Over time, you level up, and you get stronger than the snakes and dogs that you're fighting in Onet. In fact, if you become sufficiently strong, you don't even have to fight them anymore. They, they attack you, you deliver a one-punch defeat, and then you go about your day. But what if me here. At literally any point in time, you could be derailed. For example, say you get into a zombie fight in Threed, one for which you are grossly overpowered. Now, you think this one's in the bag. It's the last one before you have to fight the boogie tent, and you see no reason these zombies will cause you any trouble. But guess what? The zombies deliver an unlikely series of severe attacks, and while you do end up winning in the end, you're severely crippled. To boot, for whatever reason, you aren't able, you're not even able to heal your characters before going into the boogie fight tent. Son of a bun. The boogie tent fight has changed in that case, hasn't it? Things don't seem so easy. In the darkest dungeon, my fight with the sonorous prophet, 
went exactly like this. I thought it was set with only one battle between my camp and the boss battle. Those fucking enemies nearly dropped me dead and the Sonorous Prophet was a far more difficult fight as a result. The surprises are a big part of Darkest Dungeon, whether it's a trap set inside a particularly tantalizing curio or a series of devastating attacks from the weakest demons that you could find. These surprises can really kill your momentum and your dungeon fighters. And there's very little that you can do to stop these things. Darkest Dungeon is RNG based. I had to look this up. Uh, that's random number generator, which means that no matter how confident you feel, there's always a chance that something out there is going to knock you down a peg. This gameplay element made me rethink everything I did. Should I open that chest? Am I strong enough to take a hit or resistant enough to blight that I'll be okay if something happens? Should I continue fighting these scoundrels before me, considering they've already taken two of my favorite characters? Should I press on? Now, with most role-playing games, these questions are furthest from my mind. Now, when I play an action RPG like Skyrim or Fallout 3, I'm only thinking about the moment. If I'm near enough to death, that I should be worried, I can run away, or what the hell? I could just stick it out because I saved recently. In a turn-based RPG like, say, Final Fantasy, I probably have a good idea off the top of my head whether or not I can withstand more attacks. And if push comes to shove, I can always run away from random encounters. In a lot of action-based games, we're conditioned to only react because strategizing isn't really necessary or particularly sexy. But in Darkest Dungeon, you need to think about what you're bringing into the dungeon. You also need to make decisions on the fly as your party is damaged or demoralized. And you have to make longer term strategy adjustments as your party changes. Okay, fine. But how does this affect the player? I don't know. I don't speak for every Darkest Dungeon gamer, you asshole. Don't ask me to represent them and don't act like my analyses are bullshit because I believe in feelings and you don't. <clears throat> Sorry, that was unnecessary. This game makes me nervous, this is my point. It makes me second guess every choice I would have made automatically in any other game. Like, hey, look at that Shambler altar. Wanna put a torch in there? In another game, I might just be like, sure, go ahead. But in this one, it doesn't sound so good. And then again, maybe there's a good reason to do it. Look, there's a trap coming up, watch out. That's fine, my highwayman has a high disarm rate, but it's not 100% and he's nearly dead. Can I risk it? Should I have someone else attempt to disarm even though they have a lower success stat? Developing strategies like this in a tabletop game is common practice, but it's abnormal in video games. I blame Halo and that 30 seconds of fun nonsense. Modern design demands that the player constantly be doing something. Working, fighting, shooting, jumping, kicking, adding, subtracting, dragging sticks. Developing strategies is just as engaging, but AAA studios don't think they'll make money off that sort of thing. Needless to say, surprises took a toll on my confidence. You have to consider that you might become a casualty at any time. Darkest Dungeon is equally cruel to the prepared and the half-cocked, the trained and the untrained, the careful and the careless alike. We dropped our bowls and hurried to him. All we could find was his spent pistol and a trail of blood leading into a maze of shadows. To play Darkest Dungeon, you should be cold, calculating, and manipulative. To win Darkest Dungeon, it's probably best to be a horrible human being, or at least pretend to be one. I've played games for a long time, 76 long years, if you can believe it. I don't let my characters die. I don't run away. I don't shy from difficult bosses, and I don't back out of a challenge. Some might call me stubborn. Yeah, they'd be right. Darkest Dungeon would like you to know that letting your characters die, running away, those sorts of things can actually be beneficial to your run. And that's a really difficult idea for me to embrace. There are loads of things trying to kill your party and most of these things will succeed, which means stubbornness in Darkest Dungeon is not a virtue. I need to learn to let go, to be okay with failure and with characters dying. And that's not just because DD is asking me to be heartless. It's because I need to reconsider the possibility that death Madness and retreat are not necessarily failures. The most obvious example of rethinking these concepts is the flagellant. Introduced with the Crimson Court DLC, thrives on suffering. 
He becomes rapturous when he reaches 100% stress, plus 25% damage, plus three speed, and a 20 point knock to his dodge capabilities. Plus there's a chance for random attacks, though that's sometimes against himself. He receives buffs when he is below 40% health, more buffs if he reaches death's door. Plus he heals his fellow party members when he's at death's door and after he dies. So letting the flagellant get stressed, get injured, or even die is beneficial. What is this? It's a re-examination of fail states, where once we thought of success and failure as a binary condition, Darkest Dungeon toys with the idea that it could be a spectrum. They're using the game's mechanics to promote almost failing. In other words, sometimes it's beneficial to manipulate your characters in a way that is hazardous. Now, as for retreating, there aren't benefits in the same way, which is sort of disappointing because I think it would be really cool to explore the idea of retreat in a positive light. So there you go. Failure isn't so clearly failure after all. They do say to make an omelet, you gotta break a few eggs. And to succeed at dungeon time, you gotta break a few souls. We press on. So that's it. Darkest Dungeon is out to make you a nervous wreck. You, the player, the person playing the fucking game. Whether it's asked you to sacrifice your favorite character just to get a silly trinket, or it plants spikes shooting out of the ground to severely cripple your healer, you'd better be on your toes. Stress and setbacks are a key to Darkest Dungeon, so hopefully you're prepared to handle both. There's no way of knowing how any of this is going to turn out. So be warned. You're gonna die. It's really fucking dark in that dungeon.